Yeah, I've been waiting for this all day. It's very loud. It will be in a minute. Maybe you got enough memory on this. Oh, my days. When you say that's not loud, are you ready? Yeah, that's not loud, my ass. They're a first chance to hear the noise of the aircraft's four Rolls-Royce Bristol Olympus 202 turbojet engines of over 16,000 pounds of thrust each. 136 of these aircraft, including the prototypes, were built. Now only one is flying, and as you may have read or seen recently, it's in its last display season because XH558 will sadly be grounded at the end of this year. There will never, I'm sure, be another Vulcan in wow. flying condition once that happens. Oh, are you ready? Yeah, get the phone's gets one blurry. A slower orbit this time. You can see uh, the air brakes have been deployed. Wow. Ready. nuclear deterrent during the Cold War that the Vulcan initially operated. The aircraft came into RAF service in 1956 and alongside the Hankley Page Victor and the Vickers Valiant it formed what was known as the V-Force. The responsibility of being Britain's last line of nuclear defence ceased in 1968 when that responsibility was transferred to the Polaris class submarines of the Royal Navy. The Vulcan remained capable of carrying nuclear weapons. Later the aircraft were used as air-to-air -air refueling tankers and for maritime reconnaissance duties amongst other tasks. They'd also meanwhile switched to the low-level conventional strike role. Now the undercarriage down strike roll there was one last hurrah to come of course the day had never come when during the cold war it was called upon to perform the nuclear or indeed conventional strike roll but the Vulcans were called to arms one last time in 1982 in the Falklands war <laughs> Black Buck, of course, was the code name applied to the raids undertaken by the Vulcans, supported by Victor Tankers, out in the South Atlantic. The most famous of those was the 30th of April 1982, when the Vulcan serial XM607, today preserved outside at RAF Waddington, was supported by no fewer than 11 victors in a remarkable mission, whereby it hit the runway at Port Stanley Airfield, the center line, that is, with one bomb, and the edge of the runway with another, making it unusable for Argentine fast jets. At that time, it was the longest bombing raid in history, a brown trip of over 7,700 miles.
equally as heroic were the efforts on that raid of the supporting Victor tankers. No less than 18 air-to-air refuelings were required. It's coming around again, look. Vulcan XM 607 was captained on that raid by the man who's now the chief pilot of the Vulcan to the Sky Trust, Martin Withers, who is not actually flying the display for us today. Instead, XH558 being captained by Phil O'Dell, the chief test pilot for Rolls Royce. And his co-captain today is Bill Perrins, who took part in four of the Black Buck raids. The story of how XH558, this aircraft, was returned to flight. In my opinion, I think the Typhoon is. A remarkable one. I know we use that now. term in recognition of a number of aircraft today, but it's certainly very apposite 